All right, here we are. It's all about boots today, baby. I am at JK Boots in Spokane. I'm here with Tim. I needed a pair of boots. I reached out to Tim, said I needed some boots and asked if I could come film them being made. And he was kind enough to let me come and see Absolutely. how he does this work. So yeah. here's Tim. Nice to meet everybody. Hi guys. So uh, for Jake, this is, we'll just kind of start from, you know, towards the beginning. After the boots have already been like sewn like this and, and all these, everything's been sewn together, everything's been cut, the eyelets and hardware have already been put, put in. What we'll do is we'll do the first kind of wet lasting, it's called. So these have already been wet lasted. And we'll actually soak this upper in, in hot water. And then we'll mold it and do the first initial lasting where we do these couple point pulls. And this is what a last looks like. So ultimately, like this is someone's size. And, you know, that's that leather insole on there. That's the nine iron, super thick, very quality leather insole. And the, the boot will literally be lasted and shaped around the mold or the size of the foot. You know, this happened last night. We'll have it sit overnight and take like that shape. It'll take that form. It'll take that mold. This isn't actually Jake's boot, but this is what it happened to Jake's boot. And th then after this point, we have to do something called dry elasting, where we shape the heel and we shape the toe. So that's, this is kind of what that part looks like. So. Yeah, so this isn't my boot particularly, but this part is what they did yesterday, and I showed up today, obviously. So he's just showing the process. What what kind of boots are what kind of boots are you building? So for th this this one that I'm doing right now, this is just our like classic fire boot that we keep in stock in inventory, our fire inlander. But um, your boot and a lot of the other ones are the same similar process. All of our boots go through this process where it's this hand done, hand lasting. So ultimately, every boot that comes out of our company, it goes through this process right here. So. We'll start just some kind of classic lasting pliers and we'll start on the outside. And I'm gonna shape and form this heel and bend this leather over for it to totally wrap around the last perfectly. So what I'm doing is I'm shaping and forming this heel. What I have to do is I have to get all this material. There's a lot of thick material here. There's almost three, basically three layers. What I've gotta do is I've gotta pleat it and fold it over correctly for it to sit nice and even, and everything's gotta wrap around the shape of the heel. And as you can just watch and see, you can see the shape of the heel beginning to form. What are the three layers? So the first one, the thick one, the first one that I grab is the actual upper, or quarter, it's called, sometimes. Uh, then the one in the middle is the thick counter. It's a different kind of leather. It's not oil tan, it's oak tan, and it just gets really stiff and hard. And it holds the shape of that heel. Then the third top layer is the counter pocket. It's a little bit skived on the edge or feathered for it to be a little bit easier to fold over. And that's the outer portion that actually gets the, the, the beating and the bruising done. So this is looking really good. My pleats look great. So I'm folding it over. Everything is going towards the center. And it's starting to actually take and kind of shape and form. So you can kind of see, see all these pleats are going towards the center. That's a good heel. And then my left hand is the whole time supporting and trying to kind of just pull up, pull up, pull up. I want to get that stretch. I want to get that shape. And these tacks, as they enter in, they hit the bottom of the last. There's a steel plate on there. And so the tips are really soft. And so what it'll do is it'll actually go through. It goes through the three layers, through the insole, hit the tack, and actually curl up so it gets synced in. This is the hammer that my dad gave me when I was 14. This is the hammer that I learned to make boots with, so it's pretty cool. So probably the best hammer I've ever used, and so probably gonna go in a display case someday. So after this is done and this is all kind of put together, I have to form and I have to shape this heel out. So I'll hit around all these edges and get it really nice. This is a really key part here too. I wanna go around and I wanna shape these little parts and these portions right here where I can really just sink this together. This is what's gonna cause the heel to be really just well done and really well made. It's still kind of damp and wet from last night's wet lasting. So as I'm doing this, it's gonna really give it that nice just tightness. I mean, and, and this, this guy, whoever's gonna wear these boots, they're gonna be so locked in, in this heel area. It's really, really, really good. Last couple finishing touches is I have to trim this out. I've got this part, because this is excess. That's done. And then before I can send it off, I need to get these pleats down. So 
So anyways, after everything's been trimmed, the pleats have been cut, I've gutted the excess material on the inside. Just kind of one last finishing touch. I want it to look nice and round and good. And that right there is what the heel should look like on a pair of handmade boots. Nice round shape, secure around the top. Everything's moving towards the center. It doesn't look funky or off. It actually looks like a heel. And this is gonna sit and take shape again overnight, if not two days even, to really just dry and get that shape all nice and, nice and good, nice and done, nice and secure. After this will happen, what we then do is we wanna open up this portion right here. I wanna pull these tacks out from the initial wet lasting. We wanna open this up so it can kind of dry a little bit. So here's the kind of two layers. There's our layer of lining. There's our layer of the vamp, the thick eight ounce, you know, leather right there. And then there's that lining underneath. And there's that last you can see, you know, the, and that insole that's been trimmed. And so this will sit like this for easily a few hours for it to dry right here. And then what we'll do is we'll actually go and, and start putting the rest of this vamp together. So we'll wait for that for a couple hours for it to get dried. And then we'll go and start doing it again. All right, so that's done. So what's next? So I need to last the lining and then last the vamp over that. And it's gonna be with glue, with nails, it's gonna to be totally done by hand. So this part's pretty cool. So what I'll do is I'll kind of keep this folded back. I'll fold over the lining. I have my adhesives here. And I just kind of want to go just gently, you know, around these edges. I don't need to, you know, totally slather the whole thing. Just right there. And then I want to go around these edges of the lining too. Not too thin of a layer, but also not too thick. Ooh, that stuff smells strong. Yeah, it's very <laughs> strong, very, very strong. Wow. I don't want to have to put too much of it on, but it has to be strong enough to be tacky and hold together. Yeah, that's intense glue. Well, okay, that's done. So this will take probably about two, three minutes uh, to dry, and then I can actually start to, to last it um, while it's sitting there. You know, all of these are totally done by hand, right? So I mean, you know, um, sometimes other companies can use lasting machines and things like that, and that's not a bad thing. Uh, but ultimately, like when it's done by hand, there's a person behind it. You know, there's that craft aspect. Like I'm working on it and I can see, hey, this portion of the hide needs to be pulled a little bit more. This portion of the hide needs to be moved a little bit. That part of the heel. So um, like it's it's really does a big difference. It's, it's really massive. Um, all of our boots are done this way totally by hand. Like with a human, you know, a person is looking at it, crafting it, molding it, shaping it. Like there's someone who has the care and like genuine like, is, is, is involved in the process. It's not just kind of shoved um, you know, down a manufacturing line or, or, or whatever, however you want to say. So it's, it's a big deal, and this takes a lot of time. And this is probably the most, in my opinion, you know, other, maybe someone else who is, is in the industry, is in this industry, might have a different opinion, but I think that this is probably the most difficult part. I think it's also the, the part that took me the longest to learn because there's just so many like nuances and so many details to it. You know, you have to really have a feel for what you're doing. Like ultimately you can write an instruction book, but there's there's a part of it where the craftsmanship kind of has to come in. It's like you have, a, you have a head, you have a brain for this kind of stuff. Like you have to feel material, know how to use tools, know how the leather is gonna pull, know how the tacks are gonna sit. And it's just experience in time, in time, in time. So like our team here is really good. And we've, we've we, I personally put a lot of time and effort um, you know, into getting the, to where we want it to be. Leather crafting, you know, it can be as simple as, hey, like, let's make a bookmark to, like, as complicated as, hey, like, let's take this thick leather upper and, like, let's mold a boot around it. So it's pretty cool to see. And as we keep going, you'll kind of see the end product and how every step kind of builds upon itself. So it's pretty cool. So in that, like, quick little minute, um, I think that the glue is probably dry enough. So we're going to put it back in our dry bag. No nails here, just on, on, on uh, the adhesive. How long does that glue last? Long time, uh, pretty much forever. It, it bonds pretty much forever. I've, I don't think I've ever seen like it, you know, disintegrate inside on its own or something. You know, when boots come in for a rebuild, we actually still kind of have to struggle a little bit to, to get it taken out. What part of the boot disintegrates first? I mean, probably just the outsole, I would say, just because it's the most wear, uh, the most everything on it. So, I mean, we'll typically, like, I'd say if you're wearing your boots, like, every day, and you're hard on them, you know, seven days a week type deal, I think just on the soles, the rubber outsoles, you should comfortably be able to get, you know, anywhere from a year to a year and a half before you need to come in and get a resole. And, again, that's being really, really hard on them. But all this interior stuff, it only really starts to, to need to be redone 
maybe three or three years into it, you know, four years into it. So after I've finished doing all that, I'm gonna trim off all of this excess right here. So when the lining is done, there's a little nail in here that I actually need to pull out. There it is, right there. So it doesn't poke you. See this one too? And these. That's done. Now, you need to go to the vamp portion. So this part, same thing, needs to be lasted over. We're gonna use our adhesive again. But this time we're not going to wait for it to dry. We're going to go right to it. So I'm literally shaping and molding this to the right form. And every little, every little pleat, every little pull, I'm stretching the leather and putting it over the mold of the boot. This is a really big deal. If you do a bad job at this, what's gonna happen is I'm not gonna get the full stretch out of the leather right now. And so the guy will, or whoever will be wearing the boot, and then like, they'll wear it for six months, for example. And because the lasting wasn't done well, the boots will start to stretch because I didn't get the full stretch in the beginning. Right now, I'm getting all the stretch that I possibly can out of the leather, so that it's true. It's true to the mold, it's true to the shape. And it looks like I'm not pulling that hard, but I'm pulling very hard. Like especially right here, I don't wanna go two hands, I really wanna get that, all of that out. I'm gonna go over. Good. It's all nice and flush. It's really important. I can feel there's no air left here. I'm looking at it. Everything is coming towards the center, both on the toe and the heel portion. So this is a very, very well lasted boot. This was done really well. I'm looking at the heel, it's nice and secure. I'm looking at the toe, it's nice and flush. All the pleats look even and proportional. I mean, even some of the nails come directly across. That's really good. As I look at the tack pattern on the heel, same thing, it looks proportional. Everything's coming towards the center. If there's a dot right here, like a magnet, it looks like all the pleats, they're coming towards the middle. That's the way it should be. It means it's proportional, it's even, it's coming around correctly. So that's a really, really good job. There's no air right here. I can literally feel how it's nice and snug. That means I stretched this out really well. There's no air in this area. I stretched it out really well. There's no air pockets in this area. That was stretched out really well, so. Yeah, that, this is gonna be a very, very quality fit and it's gonna last a really long time. Okay, so those are done, so what's the next step? The next step is we're gonna go and shank the boot, it's called, and bottom it. So we're gonna build up the arch, build up the lineman shank, bottom the boot, and we'll kinda see how all that's done on the inside. So we're gonna open it all back up again. Technically, what's gonna happen is that if it was gonna work on this exact pair, if I had just done this, I would actually wait probably like two days before I open it up so that it can take that form and take that shape um, and let it really just so, <clears throat> dry around the mold before we open it up and start working on it. That way it's gonna really hold its form and hold its shape you know, over years to come. So this is actually your boot, Jake. Okay, awesome. so 16 inch tall, lineman patch, okay? And then we're gonna build up the inside. We're gonna do that lineman shank and all that jazz so you can actually climb it up. This is kind of what the materials look like. This is that leather oak lineman shank. This is an oak midsole. These are gonna be the leather cover shanks, and then these are gonna be the reinforced steel shanks that give you the really, really just strong rigidness for when you're climbing. So it can be really strong, uh, so you can stand on the gaffs and like really have just the strength that you need. Smooth upper, rough side out, just so classic what, black. So it looks cool, but why do you do that? Why do you? So the rough is always just better than the smooth. So like for example, here's just a blade. Like you can scratch that all day and it's not a problem, but the smooth is way more sensitive. And so ultimately, because this place is gonna take the most beating, I like to do the rough out on the lower. That's kind of just the, the standard that we have. It's just the best way, yeah. Cool. So anyways, this goes on our boot jack, okay? And these are all the tacks that I had put in. This boot has already been drying for a couple days and we gotta pull all these out. 
Okay. I want to kind of open this up a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to need to make some incisions here and kind of open this up. So that's what I'll do. Also, it's a little bit more complicated because there's a lineman patch here, but it's not a big deal. So we have the two balls of the feet right here. This is the inside ball and the outside ball. So we want to ultimately be about an inch and a half below that with our incisions approximately. That's important where to put it so that the boot doesn't leak over time. So we'll start with our inside. Make our first cut. I'm gonna lay the, the blade down as flat as I possibly can. I'm just gonna go straight across. And I know just how to go far enough just because I've done this so many times. Boom, down, I'm gonna lay that out. I'm gonna come on this side and make our incision. I'm just gonna, I'm going slow just because I'll show you guys the detail. Just really nice and boom right there. That's perfect. Now, with the lineman patch, so you got two layers right here. So I gotta kind of get this excess out here without snipping the thread. So don't do this at home. That was very good. And then with a lip knife, I'm just gonna trim the excess. A lot harder than it looks. Now I'm gonna crown this. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm actually gonna just hit all the way around and really just crown this sucker. See, sometimes this adhesive can get stuck. Completely okay. Just wanna trim that off. Lay that back down. Now I just want to hit all these tacks in. Okay. That's very good. Now, the way that the lineman boot works is because you're going to be climbing. You're going to need the supportiveness. You're going to need this right here. Okay. I'm going to mold that in. And then you're going to want to have a leather cover shank right there over the top. So that's what it's going to be like. So it's two shanks, one's leather, two. Yep. and one's steel. One's steel. So that's and what then, it looks like. I always wonder what the steel shank looks like. And then on top of that, after we've bottomed it, there's going to be a third lineman shank. So there's actually technically three going in. Right there, centered. I'll usually have two tacks go just right through here. Now this is gonna have a leather cover shank. So you don't want it to go too high because then it can actually bother you while you're walking. So the line is about the ball of the foot. So just to be safe, we're going to trim this just ever so slightly. Just to have it really... Just kind of tapering it? Yeah. There we go. We're going to want to wait a little bit just for it to get really nice and tacky. You know, sometimes it, dry, it actually dries, and then when it's dry and you stick it, it's much stronger. If it's wet, it won't really stick, so we want to wait a couple minutes. So this is dried. It'll be nice and sticky. This is our cover shank on top of the steel shank. Just like... Now, I'm going to trim, because there's just some excess material here. Boom. Perfect. So the next thing is called bottoming. So we have two things here. We have our midsole, and because it's a climber, but we've got our lineman shakes. So this is the oak tan, very thick, very heavy duty midsole. You've got the you know suede side, and you've got the rough side. This rough side is gonna sit on it like this, and then the suede side is gonna be where the rubber sticks to. The rubber sticks a little bit better to the suede side. We're gonna do two coats of blue. This is our first thinner coat, and then we'll have a thick one coming afterwards. This is a pad that we put over this area so that there's no squeaking, so that the hard oak tan doesn't rub against this oak tan and it won't squeak when you step. 
be very clean and careful here. These edges are very important as well. While that's gonna dry, <clears throat> I'm gonna do my second coat of the thicker stuff on the uh, on the midsoles. Cool. We're gonna want to give that 30 minutes, uh, approximately. You know, 25, just for it to really seep in. It's gonna soak in. If it's too wet, it won't stick. So it has to be dry. And then another thing too is, you know, heat will also usually activate it. So, right. okay, so the glue is dried for a while. We're just gonna activate it with some heat. Quick, just maybe. You, you're cooking them, huh? 30 seconds or so. Okay. So we kinda wanna push all this together and get it nice and flush and even, you know, in those gaps right there. So we are gonna stick our midsole nice and proportionally and centered and even there we go very very good and on the jack we go now hammer it out kind of in this area to really get that shape right there around the shape because i want to see i need to know where I'm gonna be putting my nails. It's really important. Boom, right there. Okay. We're gonna do two rows. Come around and do the heel. And then come over here and welt press it. All the way nicely. So squishing it all together. Squishing it and clamping it all together. Then we're gonna trim here. Then deal nice and round. Then the last is gonna come out. Break it. And pull it. Now, we're gonna come over here. This is called our lock stitching machine. This is a really cool machine. So what, I'm, what we're gonna do, we're gonna lift up this pedal, slide it on. And see, because it's, it's such a tall boot, it's a little bit difficult. That's it, right there, one line. And what that does on the inside is it's coming through the midsole, through the insole, and then back up, and it's gonna seal all of these pieces together. Because they're lineman boots, we still, or climbing boots, we still need to put another third shank over the top, like this. That's what's gonna give you, and fill in all this gap right here, and really give the rigidity. That's what a lineman shank looks like right there. So first things first, let's clean these kind of up because the, the adhesive won't stick if it's too smooth like that. So we need to put the lasts back in. So what happened here, see this little nail that popped up? That means that it popped right in there, right where that break is. Not a big deal. So we're just gonna pull it out. We're gonna do a one right below it. We hammer that over so it can hit the steel plate and soften so you don't feel the threads as you're walking. One other thing that we need to do is, since these are lineman boots, right? We're gonna have this lineman shank coming over this. So this little ridge, we want to get rid of. So I'm going to kind of sand that down and flatten it so that other piece that we put over it will be nice and 
flush and flat. So the lineman shank, bring it up as far as we can. What are you marking there? Just uh, how far the glue needs to go. Because we're going to put this on adhesive. We're going to go with the same process here that we did previously. We're going to do a little bit of thin and then a little bit of thick. So same thing, we'll let that kind of dry and seep in and then okay. we'll actually do a coat of the thick um, here in a little bit. So I did a thin coat, thin coat, let it seep in, then thick coat, thick coat over the top, and that's what's really gonna just be nice and stick together. So the stirrups and the gaffs, like it's always like right here, cause your heel is gonna be like right there, and then your gaff is gonna come like right here. And so this is gonna be the highest pressure area. So the thickest part of the um, lineman shank is gonna sit right here. And this is just where the most pressure is, and that's where the most strength is gonna come from. Awesome, man. These things are going to be stiff. They are going to be stiff. That's the point. You know, yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's it's stiff enough that you can climb and, you know, be comfortable, but also comfortable enough and rigid enough that, I mean, you'll be able to walk and kind of do what you need to do. So right, good. right. Yeah, the stiffer the better when you're standing on spurs, yeah. you know. But, yeah, I get what you're saying. You want to be able to walk around, too. Yeah. And every time we do this, um, same thing. We put We put a coat of glue on, and it dries, you know, and it seeps in, and it soaks in. You know, we don't we don't rush it at all. Um, so it, if it's wet, it's not going to stick. Yeah, it's amazing how much patience goes into this. It does. Yeah, there's a lot of patience. Yeah. A lot of love. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of care. You know, uh, every every pair has my dad's name on it. You know, so JK, right? So I mean, that's super valuable. And so you know, every every boot that goes out with that on there, it, it has to be good. Has to be perfect. Um, has to be done the right way because it's our name. It's my dad's name. It's our family name. So. Um, it's not like we're just cranking out boots, you know, it's like this is, we want to be proud of what we're doing. So that's what this is. That's awesome. It's yeah. awesome. It's like made in America. Yeah. It's the whole, whole, whole deal. Yards. Yeah, made in America. Totally. This is family. By hand. By hand, yeah. yeah. And I think it's cool that like ownership actually knows how to do this. Like this is, it's like, a, it's what I do. You know, it's like I know every in and out of this because my dad showed me, my brother, same thing. So we know everything. Um, you know, we're not just sitting in an office, you know, whatever, like we're, we're on the floor getting our hands dirty. Like we know what's going on. We know how to do everything. And so that's, I think really a really, really big deal. The direction and vision of the company is like coming from the perspective of, Hey, we know what we're doing. We're boot makers. You know, we're not just some sales guys or whatever, you know, like we actually know what we're doing and we, we know this craft, we understand it. Like it's a part of what we've been doing since I was, you know, 14. So I definitely think that's really important and it makes us do a better job. So we just stuck on this lineman shank running all the way through right there. We're gonna weld press and trim it. Now we're ready to put the soles over the top of this. So now that's done, this is done. That's that lineman shank, that's that area. It's flat, wide, reinforced. Soles are gonna go over the top of that and then we're ready to stitch them into the heels. So these are the soles, okay, Vibram, Red X soles. These are the fire retardant ones. They're just the really, just the toughest, toughest as they come. I mean, it wears like iron. So these will be really, really good. And they'll literally sit straight up just like that. I'm actually going to get a little bit wider, of a, big, a little bit of a bigger one. Wow, there are a lot of options. There are a lot of options. And see, they come to us kind of glazed over like this. So we got to sand and kind of sand it okay. off and get the glaze off so the adhesive really sticks in. So we got kind of that shiny glaze off of it. We got it all cleaned up, and now the adhesive will really, really penetrate and just kind of stick through. So we're gonna do a nice, thin, even coat. That's gonna dry for a while, easily, probably 45 minutes to an hour. And from here, we're gonna do another thin coat. 
How long does one of those containers of glue last? Uh, so yeah, much depends. gluing. Yeah, it depends how busy you are. Probably a couple days. Crazy. Yeah, I'm like shocked how much glue yeah. is involved. So that's a good thin coat. We'll let it seep in and then we'll do a thicker coat. All right, so, so it's been like an hour. It's been about an hour. It's dried right. really good. Good thick coats. Now we just got to activate it with some heat and stick them. Yeah, I'm amazed in this process. You know, you might not be able to tell in this video. There is a lot of doing something and then waiting. And then, you know, I can only imagine how tricky it would be logistically coordinating a whole room full of people you know doing a process and then waiting letting stuff dry you know it, it's not impossible to, to do like you know with, with people and everything you just need to think it all through do it correctly um you know and, and you have it, that's why it takes time that's why we're weeks out because you know you can't just throw them together in a weekend or whatever like it doesn't really it doesn't really work that way, unfortunately. You know, it's 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 it takes time. It's processes and stuff. So there's a lot of wait time. There's a lot of dry time, and you and you, you need to to do it the right way. Yeah, you couldn't even throw mine together in one day. Yeah, we got the whole could. place yeah. to ourselves, yeah, and yeah. we had to. You had to do a bunch of steps yeah. before I even got here. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, sometimes people have asked like, how long does it take to make one boot or something like that? And it's hard to answer that question because it doesn't work that way. Like, you don't just like make one from start to finish. I mean, you could. But it wouldn't be legit. It wouldn't be done, done the right way. So yeah, you'd have to sacrifice quality to get it done if it any was faster. Like super quick, quick, quick. You know, our yeah. fastest like expedited stuff is you know two three weeks tops. You know, like that's that's wow. the minimum. You know, so um, that's why you know we try to keep as much inventory on hand as possible. Um, you know, and, and just have kind of boots ready to go, and we want to have more inventory on hand in lots of different forms, like different models and stuff, um, and lots of different sizes, just so we can kind of delete that lead time, you know, so to speak, so. And because they're lineman boots, you know, there's gonna be this lineman shank and we want the space for the gaffs. I'm actually gonna push the sole forward a little bit so the tread isn't in your way, you know, right hmm. there, if that makes sense. All right, so real quick while it's hot. And you don't want to slam too hard here because if you slam it too hard, it actually doesn't make it stick. It actually bounces off, mm. you know, because it's hot right now. So you just right. do light taps. And then we go to the weld press and trim it. I'm going to go ahead and trim the excess. Okay. Done deal. Now we go to the stitcher. You said these are probably your oldest machines? This is probably our oldest machine, yeah. How old do you think it is? I want to say, you know, 60s, 70s. Just real quick. It's, it is it is lubed up and oiled up, but, you know. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I just always like to run a little bit. I think it's moist. <laughs> so after we stick the soles on, we want to put two lines. We're ready for stitching. Two lines of stitching right through here on this machine. Right yonder, just some soap and some water for it to slide really easily through the channel. Technora no burn thread, all our JK boots get it. Set it up, no gauge, just through. And let's go. Right there towards the end, it got really thick. That's why the sound changed a little bit the machine was having to go through all that material. I mean, look, this is almost, you know, seven eighths of an inch. It's a lot of thickness. Now we put on our gauge to give us a little bit of spacing so the holes don't go right on top of each other, but there's just a little bit of space. Boom. Man, so many moving parts in that thing. Two rows. It looks awesome. All the way through. After that, we move on to the heels. We're gonna have a base and a cap. We're gonna wanna set our heel first and mark it off. Now, because you're gonna be climbing in them, you know, again, you need a little bit more space here, you know, for the gaff. Or is that what it's called, right? It's a gaff? The, what, ga the gaff is the actual metal part, but we call it this well, for, yeah, whatever. it's all the same. Yeah, 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 yeah whatever. I don't know, whatever goes here. Right? <laughs> yeah. So normally, this... you know, we would use a gauge like this to, to tell us where to set it, but we're not gonna do that because it's a lineman boot or a climbing boot. So I need to eyeball it a little bit more. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually gonna kick it back 
a little bit and we want this cap to line up with that guy right there. So it looks like it does to the camera perfectly. Just eyeballed it though, I'm gonna check. Now we need to bring it back a little more. There we go, I like that. So the idea is that the back of the cap is lining up right there with the back. And it's just, it's just I mean, a hair forward, but I don't wanna kick it back too far because then it's not gonna be too comfortable walking, but that's more than enough space for your spurs right there. I'm gonna mark it and then we're gonna trace our cap. We've got some of our good old adhesive you love the smell of. Yeah, it's my favorite part. <laughs> we've also taken a lift out of this. Typically there's four, but we've taken one out because this lineman shank is in here. It's actually gonna add to the total height of the heel. So we have to count for that. If there was four in here, the heel would be too tall and be uncomfortable. So we took one out. We also flattened it straight across. All the nails are entering angled in towards the center and they're gonna hit the bottom of the last and they're gonna curl up into the insole. Okay, now I've got my cap. Now one thing that I need to do is I need to check to make sure that it's not rocking. So see how there's a little bit of rock right there? Mm -hmm. I just need to grind down the front part just ever so slightly. And the precision is just amazing. Good. There we go. That's how it should be right there. Wow. The whole thing is going to lift up. Good. Nice, good, even coat of glue. Same thing. Nice and even all the way around. Why is it hollow like that? So the idea is that when pressure comes down, you know, oh, this part I will see. come forward and that will also stick to the center. So that's right, the, that's where also your it's heel kind of is. dead weight, yeah. Yeah, okay. Alrighty, so they've dried for a little while, and now we're gonna set the rubber cap. Make sure that it's clicked out slightly, because most people kind of walk on the outsides of their heels anyways. So we kind of offset that heel just a smidge, and it is, so that's good. Inside these um, holes are little washers. So the nail goes through and the head grabs the washer and like sucks it down. So it holds it very, very strongly. Same thing, everything is angled. Ever so I noticed slightly. you're not going, it looks like you're kind of, you're not yeah, going. Yeah, kind of go like pattern. a star sometimes yeah. pattern. Yeah. It's like changing a tire, yep. like you want it to be even. Yep, then see here, I kind of get oh. in there it's kind of hard to get that with a hammer. So then we're gonna use the nail set and really just sink them in. And it catches that washer and sucks it down. Then we're gonna put one right here in the center. Boom. Then we have some screws that are gonna go right yonder. And you do rebuilds too? Yes. And then a few other brands, handmade only. We don't do like, you know, the not handmade stuff. Alrighty, last couple touches. I use this French hammer, gonna get in there, make sure it's nice and good. And I'll actually roll the cap around these edges just to kind of really make sure it's nice and stuck. Boom. And we are off to the sanding room. Just got done saying the next thing we need to do is something called sock lining. So what that looks like is putting thin, very, very thin leather layer over the inside 
to the, over, over the insole where those nail heads are. So if you can kind of put your camera inside, you can see. See the shiny? Yeah, so those are all the nails that clinched, that hit the bottom of that steel plate. And that's awesome. And the first thing I want to do is check to make sure that they all did clinch. There's no way it's going to poke you. So as I do, yeah, we're good. There's nothing sticking out. That's a good thing. It means it was done very well. So we got our saw cleaning. See, it's skived right there on the edge. All right, go on. It's quick, easy. I'm going to do some quick light layer. And then same thing, a quick light layer on the inside. But we got to be delicate because we don't want to get it all dirty. And so I just have in my head, I know the shape of the sock line. So I just kind of draw it out inside. And then I lay it down. It's kind of going to go like this. Contact. So I lay it in very nicely. Okay. Now, one quick thing before we do finishing. We just need to slightly trim them. Now we just want to trim real quickly. The excess all around. There we go. After we're done trimming, we've got to do the final touches on sanding and then we can do ink. So it starts with our cone. That's the air, it sucks all the dust. That's our gum cake. It's just very fine, very, very, very fine. Now we go to the ink. So I just want to dust it off first before I put any kind of ink on it. Uh, it's called a finisher. Just it's, that's just all it's called. What do you think? I think it looks beautiful. What's that? Uh, just some basic waterproofing and just some shine. Kind of give me that. What do you think the best thing people can do to keep their boots dry is? You know, just classic waterproofing spray. You know, or even just grease. Albinox grease is good too. Yeah. Now we gotta put them on. Laces? Yeah, let's go. Uh, all right. Time all right. to put them on. All right. Got to lose the Crocs. <laughs> a little, little bit of an upgrade here. Just a little bit. I'm going to feed these laces under. And then we're going to set it here inside. Hey, while you're lacing these up, do you think you could uh, maybe tell uh, a little bit about how you were telling me how your dad came over here from Ukraine yep. and all that? Yeah, yeah. So um, my dad was born in Ukraine, southwestern Ukraine, um, and he was born, so he's Bulgarian, and he was born in just a Bulgarian village in Ukraine at the time. And um, yeah, just started doing life there, small town. And always had this dream uh, to have a business. Always had this dream to, you know, work with leather. He would tell us often when he, even when he was young, you know, a teenager, he had this dream for family and just had this dream to do a business together. So anyways, you know, life moves on and gets out of the military. This is, you know, during Soviet Union era. Um, so obviously, you know, Ukraine is a part of the Soviet Union. So everyone serves, you know, mandatory two years when you're 18. So he gets out of the military and starts working with leather. Um, and making boots. And he actually was working with leather even before that, but, um, you know, starts doing that. Meets my mother, gets married um, at 22, and um, they move together to a country called Moldova, again, still within the Soviet Union, and, you know, starts working full-time at, you know, manufacturing boots. And um, 
they did that for about four years. And then in 94, um, a civil war broke out in that country. And it was bad. I mean, you know, any, everything you can imagine. Just at that time, the government kind of started trucking out all of these refugees. My parents were among that group, and they already had two kids at the time, my, my older brother and older sister. And uh, my uncle was already here in the States and was able to make like a call for my dad to come out. And also because they were believers, and the Soviet Union you know, was persecuting believers, um, America was very open to that. And so my dad was able to immigrate to the United States as a Christian refugee. And in March of 94, you know, flew straight to Spokane uh, from Moscow. And um, just through connections and just kind of word of mouth and some time, um, he, as soon as he got to America, about a week later, started working again in the same craft, making boots. Um, and he just became this very key guy um, and, and, and one of the companies and just was working really hard. And um, we just did that for a long time. It was very important to just the production. And he always talked about how, you know, he always had this dream to start a business with his sons. And just some time needed to happen. You know, just got to America, getting on his feet. And fast forward to about 2006, uh, my parents had the opportunity to kind of start a business um, to do it's just very minor shoe repair. And then my mother was a seamstress, so she was doing tailoring work. And that just, you know, didn't quite work. The economy was starting to tank during that time, 06, 07, 08. And it was just honestly a huge backfire. They got even more in debt. Um, lost one of their one of the houses that they were moving to, had to move back um, to Spokane, and just all this huge mess. And but they didn't give up, and so they started kind of again from scratch. And in about oh six oh seven, they restarted their um, small business here in Spokane. And it was really hard. It was really challenging. I remember being a kid and just seeing all of that, and it was really hard for a while. It was a very rough season. Um, you know, a lot of debt, working long hours, all these things. And just little by little by little, just like miraculously, um, just kind of started to get out of that, get out of that more and more, more and more. And then finally in about 2012, 2013, my dad started to kind of pick up machinery, pick up equipment, started to see this dream kind of come to fruition. My older brother, um, Will, was a little bit older than I was and started getting involved about that time when he was like 14, 15, just helping work, website, all these things. And then I got involved more around 2015, 2016. And so from that time, 2015, 2016, I'd say is when it got really, really serious. And we just started kind of growing. And I was getting out of school, running to the shop, running to work, trying to get out as soon as I could. And things just started moving. Things just started growing just little by little after that. And, and, and the rest is history. You know, we, this dream that my dad had, this American dream to come here and start a business with his boys, it did happen. And for some young kid who grew up in a small town, a small village, you know, in, in a communist society that looks down on believers, looks down on capitalism, looks down on dreams and vision. Uh, it was almost totally unrealistic and just a fairy tale to think that you would be in America, starting a company, growing that company with your sons. And it happened. And he did it. And honestly, it's, it's just God. That's all that I can say. And it's possible and it's doable and it happened. And so here we are today, you know, 1994, 30-something years later. Good little short story. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So, and this is a product of that. So, JK, John Kodzi, right there. Wow. Glory to God, man. Glory to God. That's that is right. so amazing. Is crazy. You want to try them on? Yeah. Okay. For sure. Just grab the back and just okay. pull them through. Yep. Boom. Wow. Does that feel good? Feels great. Yeah. Okay, let's take that one. And you want to take this tongue and fold it over. Outside okay. Outside in, just like that. Okay. Okay. This video is getting a little PG. <laughs> My knee in. We're showing, we're showing a lot I'm of knee in this that. video. Take a couple steps. Dude, they feel awesome. Good, honest. seriously, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they feel so awesome. Like very little break in. Um, I mean, just them being tall, but other than that, they look good too. Yeah, I'm really excited. I love the high heel for, you know, grabbing your spurs. I love the tall shin for extra padding. Yeah, actually, one of the problems I have with the boots I'm currently wearing is they're really short. I'm always getting sawdust in them. Nice. How do they look? Really good. Really, really good. Cool. Damn, go. how amazing. Thanks well, so much for having me out, man. No problem. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> Thanks guys right. for watching. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. These hands did it right here.
All right. I'm just about to head off. Just huge thank you to JK Boots, you know, for having me on. I mean, who does that? I, I needed some boots. Mine were getting real worn thin, and I wanted to get some more, you know, lineman boots. And, you know, I just asked, hey, you know, I need some boots. Can I film Can I film you making them? And he's like, yeah, sure, no problem. I come out. This is a Saturday, so, you know, nobody's here. And he came, that was hours of work. We, we've been here for many hours, you know, and just super awesome for Tim for, show, you know, sharing his story, sharing his craft. You know, it takes a lot of courage to just let a guy come in with a, you know, camera, stick it in your face and watch you work the whole time, you know, show every single step of the of the the process you know that it really showed at least to me that means that you know that's a man of integrity you know as far as i'm concerned so thanks for watching they're gonna do some sort of affiliate link deal where if you use like um they're gonna set it up somehow so you can buy boots and i get some money out of it <laughs> i think you get a discount but i mean if you order a pair of boots it's gonna be the exact same thing that you just saw here um so more instructions will be in the description once again thanks for liking I mean, watching, I don't know if you liked it, but <laughs> thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.